Hey what's up folks this is GK So in this video I'm going to talk about what is the difference between Ansible versus Terraform or how Ansible and Terraform differ in the context of cloud Now this is a, a common question that's also asked in the interviews but also I got this question when I was doing live so I wanted to address this and give you my perspective on which tool is better in which operation or uh, for which use case so as you all know, the first thing that you want to remember whenever you hear about Ansible is it's a configuration management tool. So the way Ansible started is to solve a simple problem where if you want to configure many servers in data center, right? If, if you have thousands of servers or hundreds of servers and you want to install the software or manage the software or patch the servers. So they wanted to solve this problem of managing those many servers using a simple tool and that's how Ansible was created. So Ansible fits very well in the traditional automation or the configuration management or like deploying the softwares or deploying the applications. And Ansible is also more uh, procedural. And if you look in this diagram, let's say if the servers are a constant, meaning if there are servers that are existing there without, uh, without scaling in or scaling out, uh, in those cases, it's very good in managing those servers. It's like uh, Ansible shines when you have immutable infrastructure. Now in the case of Terraform, it is more useful for creating your infrastructure. So it, it helps you to provision the infrastructure. And more often when you hear about Terraform, it directly, people use it instead of a cloud formation in AWS or a deployment manager in GCP because this tool is similar to those tools to provision the whole infrastructure and it maintains the state of the infrastructure. Now, for example, if you want to create a Kubernetes cluster, if you want to create a, a project and then, you know, provision VPCs and networks and everything, it's more declarative when compared to Ansible. So that's why Terraform obviously is more useful for provisioning your infrastructure. So that's why I've used this term provisioner versus the configurator. Now, if you were asked in the interview, which tool to use in the case of provisioning infrastructure, if they give you two examples, of Ansible or Terraform, then you would obviously say the Terraform would be much better in provisioning the infrastructure. Now, having said that, you might argue that you know even Ansible has modules modules of uh, GCP or AWS. Even in my previous examples, I've used Ansible to provision the servers in GCP. But if you look at those examples, you know, yes, they there are. There are plugins in Ansible and there are modules in Ansible to provision the infrastructure or create the servers, but they are not as efficient as Terraform to create an infrastructure. But having said that, this video is not to create a debate between Ansible versus uh, Terraform. This video is more to explain you also how companies use these two tools together. So for that, I'm going to take the first scenario as an example. So let's say you want to create this simple infrastructure in AWS cloud or in GCP where you have a load balancer and you have target groups. Now target groups are more for uh, AWS. So you have a load balancer and you have a target group and you have multiple EC2 instances. Now, one thing to note here is that this is not using auto scaling, meaning the, the set of EC2 instances on the right side here are constant. Now, how companies create this whole infrastructure is using Terraform. So basically, companies would use Terraform to create ALB, to create target groups, and uh, to create even EC2, EC2 instances, uh, to provision EC2 instances. This whole infrastructure on AWS or GCP is created using Terraform. But they're going to use Ansible to deploy the software on these EC2 instances. So that way you're going to use both Terraform to create the infrastructure and Ansible to install the software where Ansible is best fit for installing and configuring the software as we have discussed in the previous slide. So now you can see that you know you can also use Ansible and as well as Terraform together in this sort of a scenario. Where scenario is that you have a constant set of EC2s and you're not scaling in or scaling out. So in the second scenario, which is a, a common scenario and more complex scenario is you have to create a DNS Route 53 and you have to create a, an ALB and you have to create the launch configuration. And obviously 
in the launch configuration you want to mention how many ec2 instances minimum you want to have like uh, two or whatever the minimum number of instances you want to start with and the max instances so min and max is commonly used whenever you are going to scale your instances scale in and scale out based on the load now if you take this example you want to use terraform to create the entire again the infrastructure right from route 53 to launch configuration to alb uh, to rds and all those things now in the previous example you used ansible to install the software but in this example if you know aws whenever you are trying to create an auto scalable architecture or infrastructure you have to bake in your ami or ami right so your software is already baked in as part of your ami so in this scenario it is very complex to use ansible to install the software because you have set of minimum instances to start with two or four and then they scale out based on the load it might go to 200 or 300 based on the load so it's very dynamic in nature now in this sort of scenario um, you cannot install you cannot use ansible to install software whenever the instance scales out and that becomes very complex uh, you cannot use ansible to go into that instance even by using the dynamic inventory and install the software in that instance so it doesn't it's not suitable for that so rather than that uh, you would bake in your actual application inside an image and then you would use that image to scale out so that's why in this example ansible will not be of much use to install the software in a scalable environment but having said that so there are companies who use ansible to create that image at first place so image meaning as you have to create a, an ami to mention that ami in the launch configuration so what you can do is you can write ansible playbooks to provision and provision a vm and then install software in that vm and then create an ami out of that vm and then you going to use terraform to use that image id and then create this rest of the infrastructure so that way you can also use ansible and terraform together i hope by now you got two very good examples that companies use both ansible and terraform together now whenever you are asked in an interview you can confidently answer this keeping these two scenarios in mind now a lot of people have asked me this question as well what do you prefer out of these two tools if i were to like if you were to pick one which one would you pick this is again based out of my experience and my two cents is that in cloud more and more as companies are maturing the use of ansible will tremendously reduce because a terraform will be used more to provision the infrastructure and as companies are moving towards containers and uh, as companies are moving towards a scalable microservices based architecture you don't need ansible to go and configure or install softwares on servers that are more mutable so the future will be more immutable so that's why i personally think that the usage of terraform will increase so you should focus on terraform more and then also you should you can learn ansible if you want but uh, that's my two cents so with that thank you so much for watching and i'm creating this video from india but i'm going to discuss more about why i'm here and those things in some other video but let me know in the comment section what you think about this video thanks for watching this video and do subscribe to my channel thank you